Today is exactly two years to the date when the people of St. Lucia went to the polls and changed the leadership of the country, giving the St. Lucia Labour Party an overwhelming majority in the House of Assembly. For placing their confidence and trust, their hopes and aspirations in the men and women of the Labour Party and me as their leader, I say an immense thank you. We are humbled by that historic vote and in that tremendous mandate, we have found the strength to honor our campaign, to, to put you, the people, first, and in so doing, remedy the ills that you voted against. In the last two years, we have been fulfilling our promises. Through prudent economic policies, we have slowly drawn our country from the abyss of financial mismanagement into which it had been thrust, restored financial stability, nurtured economic growth, brought un unemployment down to its lowest level in 10 years, and secured over 240 million new investments in the tourism sector. We will continue our strategy of building back St. Lucia's economic health. The international crisis that confronted and came upon us when we assumed office, the economic downturn from COVID-19, the Russian-Ukraine war with the consequences of international inflation, supply chain problems, and rising oil prices meant that we had to quickly shield and support our people from their, from their negative impact. Our government, therefore, has, in the last two years, provided massive subsidies to our people for basic food items, petrol and cooking gas. We have lowered the price of other goods for the lifting of government service charges on them. And if the removal of VAT on building materials, medicals, medical equipment, and sanitary items for babies, women, and senior citizens, we have waived the tax penalties and interest of more than 500 million on taxes owed to the government, and provided the largest increase, 25.9 million to the poor and vulnerable, by expanding our social safety net programs. Financial support has been given to pensioners. We have paid civil servants their back pay. And along with an increase in the supplies to teachers, we have assisted parents with their children's education by paying their facility fees, CXC mathematics and English fees, while also providing thousands of children with laptops to every secondary school student. As we continue to modernize our education system, we are on course with our first generation scholarships by leveraging our diplomatic and other relationships and partnering with locally based universities. We have aided registered fishers by granting them a $2 rebate per gallon of fuel purchased and are diligently working towards CARICOM's goal of 25% reduction on our food import bill by 2025 for our seven crop program. We declared, we declared health to be a priority area for action this year and have launched yet another phase of universal health care so that pregnant mothers and the elderly can benefit from free medical care. We have removed the VAT on the importation of vital medical screen equipment, which we believe will result in a wider availability of critical tests at more affordable rates. The reconstruction of the St. Jude Hospital has resumed so that it can be delivered to the people of the South and the nation in the shortest possible time. In August, this government will be yet closer to another, uh, another pledge to ful in fulfilling another pledge to the people of St. Lucia, and I look forward to making this announcement. Notwithstanding these policies to provide social justice for our people, as has always been the tenant of the St. Lucia Labour Party, we have also sought to empower them to give them the means to be meaningful actors and participants in our national economy. That is why the Youth Economy was launched, a program that has seen about 200 young people, regardless of political affili affiliation, receive over $750,000 in grants to enable them to turn their skills and talents into business enterprises. That is why an MSME grant loan facility of $10 million was established for small businesses, with recipients getting 70% of their funds as grant and 40% as a loan. It is not surprising that the response to this has been enthusiastic. 
We are building a new class of entrepreneurs in St. Lucia who can be the investors and the economic giants of tomorrow. Our mandate from the people on the 26th of July 2021, including a call to reverse and end the malpractices in the governance of our country, which had been prevalent under the previous administration. We have, a, we have answered that call by appointing a Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly for the first time in six years and securing legislation to ensure that the House never again suffers the anormality of being without a Deputy Presiding Officer. We passed legislation for the appointment of a special prosecutor to take action concerning the reports of corruption that, that occurred within the last administration and to signal our intention not to book corruption in our government. We await the, the decisions of the Judicial and Legal Services Commission on, on that appointment. In line with our promise to return good governance to St. Lucia, we enhance our Act of Independence of 1979 by removing the British Privy Council as our final Court of Appeal and replacing it with the Caribbean Court of Justice. Our judges are not inferior to their British counterparts and we are proud that we had the faith in our jurisprudence. We are proud too of our heritage and the struggles of our ancestors which freed them from slavery of the British and other colonial powers and laid the foundations of the society and people and the people that we are today. And it's for this reason, from last year, we elevated our observance of em emancipation from slavery to a celebration that aims at enkindling our consciousness of our history and our heritage. Unfortunately, the scourge of crime, and in particular violent gun crime, unfortunately continues to bedevil our country. But we are determined to bring it under control. And our policies of support and strengthening of the police force and all other agencies involved in maintaining our national security will be unabated in the year ahead. The restoration of the police training vote and the procurement of over 40 vehicles, surveillance equipment and protective gear have provided a once neglected Royal St. Lucia Police Force with the basic tools to assist with securing our citizens. The governor also began the construction of a $35 million Northern Divisional Police Headquarters, the renovation of the Southern Divisional Police Headquarters, and the reconstruction of the custody suites, which was recklessly demolished by the previous governments. <clears throat> the achievements and accomplishments of this government are numerous. Suffice it to say that in the last two years, we have pursued policies in all sectors of government that, that have put our people first. The, there are those who will attempt to dismiss the gains that have been achieved by this Lucia Labour Party administration since the people voted into government on the 26th of July 2021. Those are the ones who are yet to accept that they have lost power and that the people rejected their mode and style of governance. A mode and style that gave precedent to the interests of the governing and downgraded the priorities of the governed. We shall not be deterred by their lies. We shall not be distracted by their falsehoods. We shall not be dissuaded by their games. We shall not be moved by their attacks. We shall stay on course and we will embark on this third year in government. We are resolute in our promise to serve our people and to protect the people's victory. We are their servant leaders. We always put them first. Once again, I thank the people of St. Lucia for the vote of confidence in me and the St. Lucia Labour Party on the 26th of July, 2021. I thank you.